Welcome to the March to a Million podcast with Greg DuPont, founder of the Wealth Solutions Network. In this podcast, Greg shares his journey to positively impact one million lives by creating an army of financially minded attorneys who embrace an expanded role in their clients' lives. Greg and his guests challenge the status quo in the legal profession and the financial services industry and show attorneys how they can improve their lives, provide greater value to their clients, and experience greater professional satisfaction. Join us in this movement and strengthen your business by learning how to solve your clients' most pressing financial problems. Well, I'd like to welcome my guest today, David Kotler, the life insurance doctor. Uh, Dave and I have become friends over the last uh, several months as we've been working together on a project for WSN, a project that is a training on some of the concepts that Dave is going to talk about here today. So, David, welcome and thank you for taking yet a, more time out of your busy schedule to spend with me uh, and having conversations. So, if you would, just take a moment and, and tell people that are that come upon this podcast, uh, who is David Codler, what's your background, and why did I rely upon you as the life insurance doctor to talk about life settlements and those kind of things. Well, Greg, thank you for having me. You know, I do consider you a friend and I'm certainly um, impressed and, and so happy to be a part of your mission in terms of bringing better financial results for all the clients out there that aren't getting the services that they should be because of either a lack of education, a lack of expertise, a lack of coordination between the attorneys they're working with and the financial service people they're working with. And so your concept of, you know, bringing more estate and trust attorneys into the mix, I think is very innovative. It's very disruptive. And I think um, as as people will see, as they see the results from what we can do, very, very beneficial. Thank you, Dave, for your kind words on that. Uh, it is a mission. Uh, and the, ultimately, we're all working to try to improve the outcomes for the consumers. You know, we were talking a little bit before we went on live about our collective kind of lack of confidence uh, in the market. Uh, and I'm driven by my belief that over the next 10, 15 years, there will be a significant market disruption. Uh, and what we are doing with our March to a Million, what we're doing with WSN is doing our best to try to protect those that have accumulated their assets from this disruption and wasting of assets. And as you have educated me on the waste of an asset that is the life insurance, uh, just how much value can be brought to a family by bringing in uh, someone like yourself for a policy review. So if you would, um, you know, what's what does that look like and what kind of things could someone expect to find potentially if they just took that step of having this independent policy review as part of their process of estate planning? Well, um, I think I'll just take a half a step back. You asked me to explain earlier what my background is. How did I get my name, the life insurance doctor? So I'm just going to take a, a brief minute to um, tell my story. Is I always wanted to be an attorney. When I graduated Ohio State, um, I found that the only way that I could go to law school was to get a job during the day. And that job became working in a family business, in the food distribution business. During the five years I went to law school, fortunately, the business grew tenfold. Uh, my um, good fortune in that was finding how not to become a commodity. And so haagen ice cream was, was one of our first great products that helped grow our business. I lost that business due to a bad business decision in, in the early 90s. I pivoted. I had a law degree. I had a lot of experience being philanthropic through my business. And so when I went into financial services, my goal was to become an expert in life insurance and an expert in charitable planning. And my question was, what is the haagen of financial services? And that was a question that persisted with me for many, many years. I think I have some answers to that. I have a book contemplated on that topic, 
But to get back to the point, through becoming expert in everything to do with life insurance and how it is embedded in good financial planning, this is the service that I'm providing for people. And that service has generated literally tens of millions of dollars of benefits, cash, cash savings, tax benefits for various clients in various situations. A, a, a very not well-known fact is that 90% of life insurance policies lapse. That means they run out of money, they're gone, nothing to show for it before they pay off at maturity. That right there is a huge waste of money because not only did people put their hard-earned money into these policies, but they have nothing to show for it. A corollary loss is that each year, I have to go back and check the exact numbers, Greg, but there are millions of senior-owned life insurance policies which lapse for non-payment that could have been sold in something that we call a life settlement. So these are two separate issues, but two separate examples of the waste that occurs with life insurance. Now you might say, well, well, how do we eliminate that waste? And I came up with a very short sort of acronym that in my mind describes the three most critical problems as to why life insurance lapses. And I call it DOA or dead on arrival. <laughs> the D would stand for design flaws in the way the insurance policy was designed from inception. Whether there was a disconnect between what was being presented, what was being understood by the clients, how the policy was designed. Second part of that acronym is the O, which is the omission to fund the policy properly once it's been designed properly. That happens for a lot of reasons. I have dealt with many, many professionals over the years, and they are shocked that, you mean we have to check these policies every so often? I thought these were like guaranteed, or I thought it's like, hey, put it in my drawer and don't worry about it. No, that's 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 why 90% of these laps. And that brings me to the third leg of that set of problems is the A, which is a lack of a professional review at least every second year. And so Dave, that's a great uh, summary of that. And, and in our training that we talked about, we went into great detail as to how that works. And, and what I want the listener to understand is, you know, it's one of the flaws that I believe is a flaw of the insurance industry. Uh, the way too many policies that are quote unquote permanent policies are sold in a transaction and not professionally managed and monitored. Uh, and we as estate planning attorneys that are engaged to preserve, protect, and transfer assets, too often us take on face value that the policy that the client has presented to us is what they think it is. And as Dave has seen over and over and over again in his career as a consultant for insurance design, that that's not the case. They may believe they've got X, but they may have a time bomb ready to explode. Or they may believe that they have an exploding time bomb and the fact that uh, the term policy is going to now get so expensive that they can't maintain it, but they may actually have an asset. So if you a couple of examples, maybe, Dave, uh, of some, some of these cases that you've come across that you've seen a what the client perceived as a liability, you know, which would be a policy that was about to get so expensive that they don't want to keep it, or one that they thought was an asset, they had such huge cash value, which actually was a ticking time bomb. Well, okay, I'll give you a few, a few recent examples. Uh, one example was a couple that had purchased something that we call an IUL, which is a um, type of policy where the money is invested in the policy, it buys options in the stock market. One of the big advantages to it is that it offers what we call floor protection. 
floor protection means no matter what happens to the market, you're guaranteed either a zero or a 1% return on the monies that are invested in that policy. So that, that benefit is something like what you were talking about at the very beginning of the program about helping clients preserve their assets and our, our common concern about the markets in general um, is, is we're always looking for ways that we can not only protect people with their life insurance, but also protect them with their investments. That's a, a corollary to, to what this whole discussion is about. But so these, anyways, these people had purchased an IUL with the intention of funding it, overfunding it, so that they could build up tax-free cash value in the policy and that at retirement age, they would be able to borrow the money out of that policy tax-free because that's the way it works with life insurance. There's a big, however, to that process, and that is that you could never strip the policy of so much cash that the policy could lapse while there's a loan on it because if the policy lapses while there's a loan on it, you have the worst of both worlds. You have lost the value of that policy, but you're gonna get a big tax bill because the carrier has to send a notice to the IRS that there has been something that we call loan forgiveness. And anybody that has any business experience knows if you have a debt and the bank forgives the loan or the lender forgives the loan, that is the equivalent of ordinary income to you. So these people were faced with the policy that they'd already put in $150,000 and they were getting ready to just surrender it for no value. And I said, let's get the carrier on the phone. We had somebody that was very good with the computer. By redesigning what they already had, we found a quarter million dollars of retirement income for them if they just changed the design of the policy. Basically, we reduce the cost of the policy so that the money invested could be grown much more effectively. If you're growing money without a bunch of a, a, a assorted costs impinging on the growth, obviously it's going to perform better. It's like an associate of mine once said, it's sort of, sort of like the policy is sort of, it's sort of like a, a motorcycle engine and it's a good motorcycle engine. But if you're trying to pull a five-ton Bronco up the hill, it's not going to work too well. But if you put it on a go-kart, it's going to fly. <laughs> so you know, that that enabled us to find these people a quarter million dollars of retirement income in that policy through a half-hour phone call. You know, I want to I want to I want to highlight that real quick, David, because for the listener, um, you know, it it is a good uh, idea. It, it is a, a, a common practice or becoming more common uh, because people realizing that they are lopsided with 401ks and IRAs and they're looking for a balance. Uh, there are many financial advisors out there that are selling these plans to generate tax-free retirement income. I'm a big believer in it. However, as David just explained, if those things are not set up the right way, then they're, I won't say useless, but <laughs> they could be they're very damaging. They're, they're worse than useless. Yeah. Uh, and useless would be, would be bad enough, but <laughs> useless and costly is not good. Meanwhile, the insurance guy that sold them the concept, that sold them the policy is gone, frequently out of business because the washout rate insurance is a couple of years. Uh, so this is why we as true fiduciaries, the attorneys with an attorney-client relationship doing estate planning, need to take that step of questioning, what is this policy really what you say it is? Do you know? And with WSN, as we talked about in our training module that Dave and I recorded, we have a process set up to uh, easily have that policy reviewed so that you can have that conversation with your client and save them from that ticking time bomb. Well, and get the maximum benefit from it. Avoid mm -hmm. the bomb, but enjoy the benefits, which, which leads me to another recent case that we had. 
So I was referred to a gentleman. And this is, you know, maybe not common amongst the entire public, but I only mention it because there, there are a lot of policies which are what we call finance with a third party lender. It's called premium finance life insurance. And the problems get multiplied because as any economist will tell you, leverage is a great idea as long as it's moving in the right direction. But if you leverage your stock purchases or your insurance or whatever it may be that you're leveraging and the underlying vehicle is performing poorly, that means you have multiplied your poor result. So uh, you may have seen in the papers or heard about a lot of lawsuits that are going on now because clients are so unhappy with what they got sold and how it's performing. When you borrowed from a third party lender, let's say two, three years ago or earlier, the interest rates were two, two and a half percent. What do you think? What do you think interest rates are to borrow on a policy today at the bank? Triple, seven and a half. So this gentleman came, he had a policy he'd had for 15 years, a, a, a large, a very good carrier, AAA policy. He had literally only about three or four hundred thousand dollars of equity above his loan. He had 15.2 million of equity but he had a loan of 14.9 million. And guess what? The loan was growing at seven and a quarter, seven and a half percent each year. But because the market had been bad, the dividends that the policy was paying off had been reduced from seven or six and a half down to 5%. So he was backwards, okay? He was paying more in interest than he was getting credited and he was panicking. And so we took a look at it and the, the simple thing would be to say, oh, I had one agent say to him, mm, well, we'll just replace the policy. Yeah, when you replace the policy, you're incurring a whole bunch of additional costs in the beginning. Again, design being a critical component of success. When you're designing a policy that's going to provide money down the road, you must reduce the cost of the policy as much as possible. In this instance, there was already cash. The policy was 15 years old. He'd already gone through all the soft costs. He had a second advisor say, let's surrender some of the benefit that we've got and reduce the loan. No, you don't throw away cash, that you've got cash free. So what did we do? Number one, we said, instead of borrowing from the bank, you could borrow from the carrier at 5%. Well, we just saved 2.5% a year on approximately $15 million. Do the math. That's over $300,000 a year savings. That was number one. Then the question came up, well, uh, how's the policy going to perform when I've only got three or $400,000 of equity? Well, what we're going to do, and this is where the knowledge of how to maximize the value of the contract, we reduce paid up the policy to eliminate all the associated costs with the policy And unbelievably, the policy would perform without any more money going into it and grow for cash. Not too many many people know how to do that. Yeah, and that's that's an excellent example of where we as advocates need to say to our clients, okay, this may be your insurance guy, but I've got a fiduciary obligation to you. To make sure that that what's going on is as we expect. Let's get this thing reviewed by an independent professional. And let's get a second opinion on. It. We get second opinions on all kinds of things. But that type of, of incredible financial loss that was on the horizon because that client that David was brought to David by somebody that did take a fiduciary position with them that if they didn't do that, I'm not going to say malpractice, but sure as hell to me didn't get to the standard of care that we want to hold ourselves up to. Well, the ironic thing is when, when I first said, I think we can solve this for you, you know, there's no sale involved. This is going to take some time and it takes expertise. The fee is $25,000 consultation. 
And he said, well, wh wait a second. <laughs> Why do I need more advisors? I already got six or eight advisors. And I said, well, because what the advisors are telling you is very costly to you. And if you want us to solve your problem, well, luckily, he was the client of a CPA that I had been his financial person for over decades. And he gave him a very strong testimonial. And he said, okay, I think it makes sense. And I said, pay me half in the beginning. And if you're not happy, then don't pay me anymore. Well, we just got the second payment yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he is one happy camper because we literally saved him millions of dollars. Now for the listener, uh, although, you know, Dave is part of our team of experts at Wealth Solutions Network, and he, we just did our recording for our uh, for our training on that. So if you want to go and get to that training, uh, go to www.joinwsn.com and you can have access to that. But if you do want to reach out directly to contact Dave, Dave, would you, why don't you go give them uh, your contact information so they can reach out to the insurance doctor? So uh, my website is lifeinsurancedr.com. Spell out lifeinsurancedr.com. You could reach me at 216-857-0282. That's my cell, but between those, or I'm on LinkedIn. So um, I think just a minute on how I got that name was about 10 years ago, I started working with an attorney in the Chicago area. And this attorney was uh, had, had 8,000 estate planning clients, very prolific, very good with charitable planning, actually was licensed with life insurance and had sold quite a bit of life insurance. But the thing that intrigued him about bringing me into his mix was that I was expert in something that we call life settlements, which are sales to third parties on policies that, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, the clients don't want or can't afford. And so after working with him for a couple of years, he was so impressed with what I was doing for his clients, he would start telling them, he says, you need to get a checkup, just like you need a health checkup, you need a life insurance checkup, and I'm working with the life insurance doctor. And when he said that, a light bulb went off in my head. I says, you know, I like that name. With your permission, I'm going to use it. And that's how the name came about. And that's how the, that's why the website is there. And, and with that, Dave, uh, thank you for your time. And, and thank you for what you do uh, as we try to help as many families as we can preserve their assets and protect them from unnecessary loss. Take We're care. Happy, happy to be partners. Thank you for listening to the March to a Million podcast. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available and get in touch with our team by visiting our website at www.wealthsolutionsgroup.biz or give us a call at 614-432-8065. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Wealth Solutions Network. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice from qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have.